I'm back and I'm going to be doing another face mask while I talk about some gender change movies. Today I thought it would be a little bit interesting if I did female to male movies. I'm only talking about three of them this time around. The first one being Freaky. Now Freaky started its life as a parody idea of what would happen if you crossed Freaky Friday with Friday the 13th. Now it stars the woman who was in Detective Pikachu. And it's all right. The director was the director of Happy Death Day. Oh God. Oh. And Happy Death Day 2. It definitely felt like a movie that could be released during the pandemic. I don't know. I thought the actors were very good in it, but I thought they were a little bit better than the script. The script was like, just not very well thought out. Okay. It's about a girl who is attacked by the Blissfield Butcher. And the Blissfield Butcher is a Jason Voorhees, Mike Myers type of character who attacks kids every homecoming, supposedly. And the kills in this for a comedy were actually really good for what they were. They were solid. Now, Millie is the name, main, name of the main character. She gets stabbed with this knife that is called Ladola. And her sister is a cop and she shoots at Vince Vaughn, who plays the Blissfield Butcher. And that stops him from murdering her completely, which is very important to the story because they now have 24 hours to switch bodies back because that next morning... Millie wakes up in the body of Vince Vaughn, the Blissfield Butcher, and vice versa. I think Millie as Vince Vaughn was... Okay, I think Vince Vaughn was pretty good at imitating a teenage girl doing all the girly things. The girl, however... I don't think she was given much to work with. I don't think they worked off of each other completely. Like, it's hard to describe. I don't think Vince Vaughn was doing a very good impression of the Detective Pikachu girl, and Detective Pikachu girl wasn't doing a very good... Imp well, I mean, it's Jason Voorhees, basically. So, I don't know. Maybe she didn't have to do it, but... She, it was It was Vince Vaughn's movie. It really was. This was shot in um, Tyler Perry country, if you know any of those movies. I feel like my nose should be covered, but I know it's not supposed to be. Anyways. And so a lot of the locations were very much from a Medea movie. And if you got, if you watch those movies, it would be entertaining, I suppose. I didn't. Now, my main problem is with the ending. The ending is just, it has two endings. You know the trope of, oh, we killed the murderer. Oh, but he's not really dead. He comes back. They do that. And they have like, because they wanted to have a face-to-face, -face, I guess, between Vince Vaughn and Detective Pikachu Girl. And I don't think it was really necessary. I don't really know how they're going to do a crossover with Happy Death Day. That's something they wanted to do. They also... Maybe a sequel might get greenlit. I just, I don't see it. They still have that Ladola knife, but I mean, I guess it could be one of those where they just have that trading hands back and forth, back and forth. Ree, ree, ree. 
The second movie I want to talk about, by the way, I hate not being able to wear my glasses during this. The second movie I want to talk about is She's the Man. I feel like this movie probably came out around the same time everyone was like, bend it like Beckham, right? Oh, I gotta wash my hands. I definitely feel stuff going on. This movie stars Amanda Bynes, and I've owned it for a while. I didn't want to really watch it because I thought it would be too Nickelodeon. I'm glad to say it's not very Nickelodeon, but that I mean, it was very entertaining. I, I, I laughed quite a bit. This is probably my second favorite of these movies. Uh, for the record, Happy Death Day would probably be the uh, least favorite on this list. So I'm actually going in uh, descending order from worst to best. So Amanda Bynes has, is it plays a twin, and that twin switches bodies with her brother who's gone off to London to start a rock career, right? Um, she plays, um, I believe, a high school, because it seems like a private school, not a college. But it's weird that a, a high school kid can go off to London, although I guess he's an 18-year-old, so... Eh. So anyways, so she she has to dress in drag and switch places with him because her, fo her football, her soccer team, has been canceled. The, the girls' team at her school, next. So she gets the bright idea to go to the boys' school, play them, uh, play with their team, and then she'll be get to do her team. She'll have to go and fight her team, eventually, her old team. And this has David Cross in it, who is hilarious in Arrested, De yeah, Arrested Development. I always get that and always sunny confused name-wise. And it's... It was certainly entertaining, like more than I thought it would be. This pairs well with Happy Death and uh, um, Freaky due to the fact that they have at the very ending a scene in fog and you're like, oh man, it's, it's like, you know how they have fog in the woods in horror movies and it makes no sense? They do the same thing at the very end, but it's romantic instead of horror-based, so it's it's kind of funny. She's the man. Is it's good. It has since it's just cross-dressing, you have a back and forth kind of like in Ronma One Half, or you know, just kind of like Superman turning into Clark Kent and vice versa whenever they need to. And that's entertaining. You have this trope in a lot of these where the newly transformed person has a care has a best friend who falls in love with them and she's the man definitely has that but it's Channing Tatum who supposedly has never kissed a girl before which is ridiculous because he used to be a stripper like I can't believe that Channing Tatum has never oh, I don't know how to talk to girls oh he's Channing Tatum they Channing all over his Tatum, okay? No. I'm doing this wrong. I don't know why it's so baggy. All right. I think Amanda Bynes is too pretty as a boy. Her skin is very shiny for someone dressed up as a boy. She got friends to do her, give her a makeover. She's wearing a wig, whatever. She, it still feels like she's wearing eyeshadow. I don't, I don't know. I just don't buy it. It's just, no. The movie's funny though. It's definitely better than say, Rob Schneider's The Hot Chick. I don't want to talk about that movie. It was bad. Amanda Bynes um, is a very attractive woman, and one of the reasons I wanted to watch this one was because I've been seeing a lot of pop-ups lately. The most paused moment in any movie, and it has her where she's like partially shirt up, and it's like, you don't see anything, so I just saved you having to click through that clickbait. Also, the ones where she's like, 
so many stars who work normal job uh, normal jobs now, and it's ugh, yeah. But it's a good movie. The one I really want to talk to is Willy Millie. Willy Millie is based off of a play. By the way, I want to point out that in Freaky and in Millie Will or sorry, Willy Millie. That's hard to say. Both of the female characters are named Millie. I I don't know if they did that intentionally or not. Now, Millie plays a a tomboyish character who I don't know. She kind of thinks she's got a rough deal and. You know what? I'm just going to let the actress who plays Millie, who was on King of the Hill as Bobby Hill. Yes, sir. That's amazing. Yes, sir. Yes, I can't believe I'm on The Tonight Show. I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm going to have her explain what this movie is about. Well, first it was called I Was a Teenage Boy, then it was Willie Millie, then it was something special. And I play a girl whose greatest, deepest, darkest wish is to be a boy. So Seth Green sells me a crystal that I throw at the moon on the night of an eclipse, and I wake up the next day and I have a penis. Was this movie supposed to be for kids? What? Yes. <laughs> well, guess what? We have the trailer. All right. So one of the funny things about it being the character, the don't do dollar store ones anymore. This sucks. Uh, so one of the funny things about it being Bobby Hill is there's scenes where the dad. Oh, I love I love the parents in this. They're pushing the uh, gender stereotypes up, up to eleven a little bit, but they're making sure to get this is made in 1986. They're being like pronouns. He he you know. But anyways, so. The dad teaches Millie, now Willie, to box, right? And it's just hilarious having uh, this character who's also Bobby Hill um, later on learning how to box because there's that scene in King of the Hill. You leave your face open, you're going to get popped. See? See? Pop, pop, see? You left yourself open, Dad. And... There's just a few more scenes like that where you're like, oh yeah, that's this feels a lot like King of the Hill, but different, of course, because it's a gender change comedy. This is probably the most fun I've ever had watching a gender change or transgender or whatever you want to call these kind of movies, TG, um, whenever. I like laughed a lot during this movie. I, I definitely recommend it. I can't believe this movie isn't doesn't get higher reviews. I watched this movie originally when I was a kid, and I kept going, what the heck was that? Because I caught it at the tail end. And it came out in 1986. I came from 1985. So, I caught it on TV. And thankfully, it's not too sexual. I'm finding that when it's a girl turning into a man... It's comedy. When it's a man turning into a woman, it's sexual comedy. And they do have some awkwardness. And thank God it doesn't go too far due to the fact of the age of the actress. The actress is totally believable as Willie. Ah, oh, man. I feel a little bit like Santa Claus meets Nightman from Malibu Comics. The mask just kind of feels like Nightman. And I just love it. He's like, one point he's like, no, you can't go halfway. You have to be a boy. A boy. Oh, and it's, oh, it's so stupid. I love it. This, oh, I don't do well with that awkward social humor. And this definitely has a lot of it. But I'm going to go ahead and rank these three movies because I still have time because this mask takes 20 minutes. Okay. Freaky. On, a lot. I'm going to use the Saotome scale here. On one to five Saotomes, this one would be definitely two and a half 
Ron Masatomes. It definitely feels like a pandemic movie, and that's why it definitely got still got released in theater. The second movie, She's the Man, I'm going to definitely say that one is three 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 Ron Masatomes. Definitely. Which considering there's a boy and a girl make up one, that is a lot of Satomes. Okay. So you can't see I didn't do on a scale of one to ten. Hmm. The last movie, Willy Milly, I got it right. I'm going to rate this one. Oh, it it it's definitely past four Sao Tomes. I'm I'm gonna go with you know what? It's definitely four out of five Ron Sao Tomes, which is eight, four boys, four girls. Oh my god, it's getting into my eye. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen these movies before? What did you think of them? Are there other movies you'd like to talk about? Do you like the idea of women, women, woman, of females turning into males or males turning into females in your cinema? And why is that? I Without my glasses on, my lips, and just seeing two dark eyes, I kind of feel like I'm a, a dressed as a clown. The, the bright colored shirt really isn't helping with that. I really should have worn a wig. <laughs> and let's time advance. Okay, and it's been time. I just want to point out that this has huge gaps right there. It did not sit well on my face. I got it out a lot easier than the charcoal mask, but... I don't know what I did wrong. It certainly doesn't look like that. It's a completely different color. I get that this bubble mask is from the dollar store. But it's supposed to look a bit different on the back. Okay. Do I think it made my skin feel any smoother. When it feels smoother, it just feels kind of stuck in place, I'm noticing. The fact that it kind of fell apart, by that I mean it fell way apart, I can't recommend this one, but it came from the Dollar Tree. I'm guessing it did the, its job. My skin definitely feels different. Anyways, I hope you thought this was at least a little entertaining, and I will catch you next time.